Now we have a long psalm today, and I don't want to do it in two parts. Usually I would, but this is all one subject. So Psalms 106. Another history lesson. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. We're going to look at history. Praise ye the Lord appears 25 times. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why do we give thanks? For everything we're going to look at what God does. For he is good. His mercy endureth forever. And what we're going to see through the history is God's mercy. We're going to see God is good. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? We're going to, we're going to touch the tip of the iceberg of Jewish history. Who can show forth all his praises? All of them? Even John the Apostle said that, you know what? We couldn't even contain all what Jesus prayed. All the many volumes. If we were to write everything about Jesus. And everything about the Bible. Blessed are they that keep judgment. He that doeth righteous at all times. Well, that's only Jesus. Because we're all sinners. We've all sinned. Remember. That's the source of history. Remember. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people, the Jewish people. We're going to do a Jewish history. O visit me with thy salvation. That I may see the good of thy chosen, Israel, and Jesus Christ, which is the salvation. Jesus Christ is the chosen of God to save our soul. The nation of Israel is the chosen ones of God to bring the forth to salvation. Listen, when Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, a city set up on, on a hilltop, that's not the Christian. He's describing Jerusalem. Jerusalem's on a mountain. And with the gold that was used for the temple and all that was to be used, that city was sparkle. It brought the Queen of Sheba. And then Chris, oh, I let my light shine. It's not your light if you got a light. It's the light of Jesus Christ. If I let my light shine, you're only going to see the failure. That I may see the good of thy chosen and may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation. Not America. No America in song. Israel. That I may glory with thy inheritance. That's Israel and the land that everybody's trying to steal. We have sinned with our fathers. Oh, here we go. And we're going to look at it. Uh, a history is not so good. We're going to look at a history of God that is unpleasant. And you know what? You know what the modern world would do today? Let's erase it. Let's change it. And modern Bibles have changed. The King James and God has kept it the same. Don't mess with this. Don't mess with the Bible. We, present tense, have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. That's what we are. That's why we need the blood of Jesus. That's why if we confess our sins. Our fathers, Israel's fathers, their history, understood not the wonders in Egypt. So the time of Exodus, they remember not the multitude of thy mercy, the ones in the wilderness, the ones that died out, the ones that troubled God, the one that, can you provide a table in the wilderness? God has been providing a table the whole time. We have no water. You forgot you had no water a little while ago. And God gave you water. We have no food. You forgot you had no food. Have you brought us out here to kill us? Well, the Egyptians were doing a good job. Could have left you there.
but provoked him, God, at the sea, even at the Red Sea. As soon as they came out, the night they come out, they come to the Red Sea, they're already provoking God. <clears throat> Nevertheless, he, God, saved them for his name's sake. It wasn't for them. It was a covenant that God put on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That he, God, might make his mighty power to be known. And what mighty power is that? He opened up that Red Sea and made him walk on dry land. No one else can do that. All right, are you a great healer and all that? All right, let's go to any river or any stream. Let's see you part that stream. Never mind a sea. Never mind an ocean. Just part a stream. So we go over on dry land. And then when we all go over, it, it, it goes back. Just do that little, that's a little, a stream. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do the Jordan River like Elijah and Elijah. Just a little stream. No magic, no tricks. You just, that's the mighty power of God. He, God, rebuked the Red Sea also. And it was dried up. They didn't walk in water puddles. They didn't walk in little flowing streams of water. They walked on dry land. That's an impossibility. That's a miracle. So he led them through the depths as through the wilderness. Now you would think that's Moses. God led Moses. You know what was ahead of Moses? That flame of fire and that, that, that cloudy pillar. You know what was ahead of Moses? The tabernacle and the mercy seat. The Ark of the Covenant. He saved, God saved them from the hand of him that hated them, Pharaoh. And redeemed them from the hand of the enemy under the blood of the Lamb they came out. When I see the blood, God purchased them. The blood of the Lamb. The waters covered their enemies, the Red Sea again, and was not one of them left. It's a miracle. That's history. Then believed they his words and sang his praise, the Song of Moses. As soon they soon forgot his work and waited not for his counsel. No, we need water. Well, God just gave their enemy a whole bunch of water. They forgot what God has done for them. But lusted, coveted, Paul says, exceedingly in the wilderness. Exceedingly. Off and on. Water, food, water, food, water, food. You leave here in the wilderness to die? And tempted God in the desert. We're in the wilderness journey. We're, we're, ever since they come out. Of, listen, Moses came up to him and said, listen, God delivered you. Hooray, hey man, the water turned to blood, the serpent, the, the snake, and you know, my leprosy. And yay! And Pharaoh gets angry and says, Okay, we're gonna we're gonna make you do the same amount of breaks, but we're not gonna provide the, the, the material. And then they start cussing Moses out. From them. All the firstborn of the Egyptians, the ones who had no blood on the door, the firstborn died. The ones that had the blood, <coughs> excuse me, no deaths. There was light in the dwellings of Israel, but there was darkness in the dwelling of Egypt. Pharaoh went out and the, the Israeli cattle were alive. The Egyptian cattle were dead. And I had had people tell me, well, if you show me God, I will believe. Israel didn't. And they're going to come to Mount, uh, Mount Sinai. And the mountain is going to quake with fire. It's going to have the earthquakes. going to have the smoke. And they're going to hear God's voice. And they still had exceedingly troubles in the wilderness.
And he, God, gave them their request. But sent leanness onto their soul. He fed the flesh, but he could do nothing with the, with the soul. And even the life of Jesus, many miracles he couldn't do because of their unbelief. And is God restricted? Is there anything God can't do? Yeah, he can't really do anything if we don't believe. Because in the wilderness journey, every man of adulthood, I don't know what the age was, I forget. For every man in adulthood, except for two men, Joshua and Caleb, died in the wilderness in the 40 years. Except Joshua and Caleb, those that come out of Egypt did not go into the promised land because of the lusting, the coveting, the exceedingly tempting of God, their sins, and the unbelief, Paul said. He fed them to the flesh, but he couldn't feed them for the soul. They envied Moses, also in the camp. And Aaron, the saint of the Lord. So when he said he led them and he brought them, that wasn't Moses and Aaron. That was God. Because now here's Moses and Aaron. Moses, who gave you this position? Even Aaron and Miriam one day, like, well, I mean, who's this Moses think he is? Moses is the baby of the family. Aaron, you're, you're the oldest. And, you know, it was me that, that kept him alive at, at the Nile River. Who does he think he is? And Pilate said, for envy did the, did the Jewish people, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, turn Jesus over to the government for envy. Envy is a sin. Aaron, the saint of the Lord, you mean the one that made the cow? Aaron must have got his heart right with God. Moses was a murderer. David committed the pastor's sin of adultery. And David's in glory, and David's coming back in the millennium. Solomon had a thousand wives and served, and, and served other gods. And he was given the right to go to glory. Listen, uh, if you really want to take the, this realm of, of those men that married multiple wives was adultery because God really set forth, well, in the church, at least one wife. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Byron. Those are the ones that, you know, Moses, who do you think you are? Aaron, who do you, you know, what about us? And this was the family, the ones that held and were responsible for the holy instrument. The ark, the candlestick, the table. But they had to have been covered. And they only had to have been covered by Aaron and his son. Maybe they got away. Well, we didn't get to see the ark. Well, it's not your job to see the ark. And a fire was kindled in the company. And the flame burnt up the wicked. Here God has opened up an earthquake and the earthquake opened up and swallowed a certain family and the earth closed themselves up and then there's fire. They're coming down getting all the wicked again like the blood of the lamb on the doors in Egypt. Certain people and only the people have sinned against God. They're getting destroyed. And that very, I think it's the same chapter or I think it's the same chapter. People come up and say, Moses, why did you kill the people? You mean Moses opened up the earth and closed up the earth? I don't think so. For what God did, Moses got the blame. They made a calf in Horeb. I thought Aaron did. Aaron the saint. Aaron made it. But who did he, who wanted that cow? Aaron said, 
break off your earrings, and everybody broke off their earrings. The people wanted it. Who killed Jesus? The people that wanted Jesus crucified. <coughs> the Jewish people. It had to be the Jewish people. Because if he's the Passover lamb, who prescribed the Passover to be killed? The Jewish people. I know Jesus gave up the ghost, but the law prescribed by the, by the Passover, the Jewish people had to turn over those lambs to kill them. Who made that calf? Israel made that calf. With Aaron's help. The materials belonged to the people. They're, they're aiming them. They said that the, the sons had the earrings. Sort of like today, the, the males had the earrings. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the, the molten image. This is while Moses is up in the mountain getting the Ten Commandments. Joshua is up there. Molten image. Aaron says, I put it in the gold and out popped his calf. Now I said, you fashioned it. This is what a molten image is. It's an image that they fashioned with hammers and whatever needs to be done. Thus they changed their glory into the symmetry of an ox Showed you what a calf is, that he is grass. And Aaron said, These be the gods. It's an ox. It's not even an ox. It looks like an ox. It's a golden ox. Hey, your God. Similar to. That thing looked like an ox. A calf. They forgot God, their Savior. They kept forgetting God. There's a church age in the book of Revelation. They forgot their first love. We are to take part in the Lord's Supper as willing as much as your church wants to do it. There's no restriction. Do it every week. Do it once a month. Do it once a season. Do it once a year. Do it every time somebody puts a $5 bill in, in a plate or $100 shows up in the plate. That's, that's your option as a church. That's your pastor's option. But we are due to Lord's Supper not for salvation, but to remember that Christ suffered and died. And to remember that he's coming back. Israel in the wilderness kept forgetting. And when you forget God, that's when you sin. Look at look at the last time you sinned. Were you thinking about God? I don't think so. When we break the Ten Commandments, one of them, we're not thinking about God. We're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about somebody who's angry at us. Or a short change. <coughs> oh, excuse me. How would you? They forgot the God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt. To him, count your many blessings. Jeremiah says, mark the word of God. Let me see. I've got three people's names here that I pray for. Another name here I pray for. I got his wife crossed off because she's gone to glory. I pray for the bills and funds and account. Uh, let's see. What's this one? Seven three twelve foot healing. One twenty three thirteen. The other foot. I read somewhere the other. I read somewhere today. My my right ear needs healing. I got somewhere here. My left ear needs to be healed. I was in the hospital this day. My wife is in the hospital this day. I've got a prayer book in my Bible. So as I'm reading my Bible every day throughout the year, I can come, oh, look what God did. I forgot all about that. If I don't understand a passage of scripture, I put a little question mark. 
I've got notes and marks and all kinds of things in my Bible to remind me what God has done and what remind me what God is doing. Israel for God. Wondrous works in the land of Ham, Egypt, Africa. We've read that before. Terrible things by the Red Sea. What was terrible? The whole Egyptian army was, was wiped out. Because they refused to believe in God and they refused to obey God. They were completely wiped out. Not one of the Egyptian soldiers survived. I suppose they had a Memorial Day for them. I, I got to say it because it's the truth. You want to memorialize soldiers who have rejected God and Jesus Christ and died and gone to hell. What do you think God thinks of that? Their name is a no memorial. When they enter hell, they have no more name. I gotta say it because we're, we're stewing that week. Next holiday, I'll kick to. Therefore, he, God, said that he would destroy them had not Moses had chosen and stood before him in the breach to turn away the wrath, lest it should destroy them. And that picture is Jesus Christ, the mediator between God and man, not Mary. It wasn't Miriam. By the way, Miriam means Mary, or Mary means Miriam. And it wasn't Miriam that went up on that mountain and said, God, you're your people. It was Moses. A prophet like unto Moses, who's that? Jesus. There's one me between God and man, the man, male, Christ Jesus. Not a female. Moses went on the mountain and said, God, you know, if you do it, the Egyptians are going to say, well, you're not powerful enough. The enemies of Israel are going to say, hey, God, you know, what about your temper? What about your patience? And the Bible says when Moses spoke to God about his anger, he said, and the Lord repented. Moses is a type of preacher that loved his people and loved God. And if you got a preacher that loves his people and loves God and prays often and stands the gap, not like Jesus, I mean, he's not Jesus, but stands the gap in prayer between the, the people in his congregation and God. You got somebody for a preacher. There's Jesus Christ, verse 23. A male, Moses. A, I will send a, a man likened unto Moses. Yea, they despised the present land. The land that God gave them, they hated it. That's despised. Look at these big fat rigs. Oh, there's giants in the land. We're just like grasshoppers. We can't win it. Let's get an army go back to Egypt. And Christians do it too. We can't do it. I'm going to get back. I'm going to go back to the world. And they believe not his word. And that's exactly what Paul said. In Hebrews 3.18. They did not enter into God's rest because of unbelief. There it is. This is the unpleasant history of Israel. But murmur. Oh, they murmured all the time. As I go through the Bible, I'm marking where they're griping and complaining. In their tent. God can't hear me. I'm, I'm, I'm in my room. I, I, no, God heard exactly. And the Holy Spirit told the writer of this song, write that down. I heard what you said in your tent. You know why he heard what they said in their tent? Because they weren't content. And they complained in their tent. And hearken not unto the voice of the Lord. They rejected the word of God because of unbelief. 
and they disobeyed God. You're not going to get success. I, I just posted today, part of the name I learned today of the, the expiration to Mars. One of the names of the expiration to Mars is, is evolution. That's one of the titles. And you think you're going to get God to bless America when you are denying his creatability as creator? Why don't you just shut up? Because God is not going to bless America. If God's going to bless America, you, you, you got to destroy the media. you got to destroy all the gods. you got to destroy all the law of the science. And you're not going to do that because that would affect the American taxes and your pocketbook. And the love of money is the root of all evil. And that's written to Christians. And then you misquote that verse. Therefore, he, God, lifted up his hand against them and overthrew them in the wilderness. They dropped. They died one by one. Why? Unbelief and rebellion. You better listen to what God says. To overthrow their seed, their children, also among the nations, and to scatter them to all lands. Judges. First, second Samuel, first, second King, first, second uh, Sam, uh, uh, Jeremiah. They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor, that's a god, fallen god, the devil, number 25, and had Halloween. They say, don't say that. And eight, that's eight, right? A T E. That's the first time that word shows up in the Bible. The sacrifices of the dead. So we're going to go dress up as a skeleton, dress up as a witch, dress up as a goblin, dress up as a go uh, ghost. We're going to go out trick-or-treating and we're going to get food and then we're going to eat the food we got by celebrating dead. Or if we go to Mexico on Halloween, we're going to bring food to the cemetery for our dead family can eat. Or we go to any religion, and on their day of death, there's going to be food. And for the dead people. In America, we call it Halloween. Thus they, God's people, and Christians, provoked him, God, to anger with their invention. Let's change God's Thanksgiving Day for a Black Friday and go crazy over spending money we ain't got. Let's invent our own music so we can have, we can call it Christian music and celebrate the dancing of the flesh. Let's put a, a tag and call it Christian, and yet it's world, but we got a Christian title to it. Hey, let's take the Bible and let's add and subtract and multiply and, and, and divide. And, and Hey, let's come up with a program for a bunch of children to come to church and have fun and games and food. And we'll call it Bible, but there's only five minutes of Bible time and 35 to 45, maybe an hour of other junk. Hey, let's get Christian children together and let's teach them to compete against each other so we don't work in unity. And then when we get up as adults, you try to teach them, well, we're to work together. Why? In Sunday school class, we had team A and we had team B. We had a blue team and we had the red team and we went against each other. And then you wonder why the churches are so messed up. Sure, I'll memorize that, that Bible verse, Pastor. I'll remember that Bible verse, Sunday school teacher, if you give me a Tootsie Roll. And the more Tootsie Rolls I get, the more verses I get, 
Good. I like Tootsie Rolls. And then Jesus said, if you're going to memorize your verse for Tootsie Rolls, you got your reward. You're not getting it in heaven. Or whatever your Tootsie Roll is. And the plague break in upon them. You know what's going on right now? Coronavirus. You know what's going on right now? Public schools are closed. They won't allow God in the school. Jesus, the Bible, and prayer. That's closed. Courtrooms. Kind of closed. Because they won't allow the Ten Commandments. Churches are closed because they won't allow the Bible and the works of God and foolishness and worldliness and the devil's in the front row, amen, and the preacher at. And nobody has seen yet that it is a plague of God coming. And according to the book of Exodus, there will be more coming before the children of God go through the Red Sea. And many of you have no idea what I just said. But I'm talking about the rapture. What? Exodus? Is there a rapture in the Exodus? Why do we get plague number two? Oh, what's this problem coming back up again? What's that have to do with Exodus? I don't read the Old Testament. People did not respond to coronavirus for God. I don't know where we are, but let me state if coronavirus is the first one and it ain't the first one, Next will be the fly. Then it'll be the life. Pretty soon it'll be the death. Then stood up Phinehas, that's the son of Aaron, and executed judgment so the plague would stay. What did he do? Here comes an Israelite and here comes a Canaanite child. They're coming together. They're, they're going to have sexual relations in the name of God. Not big G-O-D, small G-O-D. Bel Peor. And Phineas grabbed an arrow and he thrust that arrow through the belly of that man and the belly of that woman. And there's one, only one way he could do that if they were in the act of sexual. And God was pleased because they were committing fornication and adultery with Baal Peor. You want a revival in America? You got to tear out that part in the Constitution, all religions have a right. And if you want a revival in America, you got to get rid of all the gods and all the religion and serve one God and one God only. And you got to close the beer joints and you got to close the marijuana. You got to get rid of the tobacco companies and you got to get rid of the movie places and you got to serve God. And every business that involved in sin needs to be shut down. Impossible? It happened during the Great Awakening. When Billy Sunday preached on the streets of America, bars closed down and the, and the alcohol companies went after him to kill him. And you know why it ain't happening today? Because the churches in the world are singing, you got the whole world in his hand. Will you come in our church doors and show us your crap? You got churches are involved to say, I will marry a man and a man, or I'll marry a woman, a woman, where the Bible calls it abomination. God bless America. And no, he won't. No, he won't. The religion of peace that chops Christians' heads off. They are our friendly. We can't insult them. Okay? And let them take care of you. Let them marry your 13 year old daughters. They will. Let them beat your females up. They will. 
That's the religion of peace that you call it. Go ahead, have your school, have your prayer mat. Do your yoga and, and face towards Mecca. And coronavirus will be just the tip of the iceberg. And when you're full blown into your gods and your religion and your science, you ain't going to turn your Titanic of a mess in time. And you're going to slam into that iceberg. And you'll go into the lake, but it won't be ice cold. Some of you don't even know what I'm saying then. And the priest stood up and he got rid of the sin. He killed the sin. When the law said, and he knew the law, if any has knew, thou shalt not kill, he went in there and killed a man and a woman, committed adultery or fornicating acts in the name of Baal Peor. And one was an Israelite, one was a, one was a Gentile, and God said, I am pleased with that man for doing it. Read your Bible, Jehovah Witness. I won't join the military. Thou shalt not kill. That's exactly what Finney has said. And look at his name. P-A-I-N-E-H-A-S. Go look it up. And let me tell you where to look it up. It's in Numbers 25, verses 7 and 8. And he killed a man and a woman. And it wasn't murder. David killed a man. That was murder. Joab killed two men. That was murder. Phinehas killed a man and a woman. That wasn't murder. The U.S. Constitution gives the right to all religions. Say what you will. Where is that in the Bible? Where does Paul say, go ahead, give all right to all the gods? He's on Mars Hill. He says, I see an altar to the unknown God. And he preached against that God. And that was counted unto him, Phinehas, for righteousness and all generations furthermore. Phinehas and his family, his children. God said that was righteous. Thou shalt not kill. God said that was righteous. Because Phinehas was stealing away the judgment of a God. And getting rid of religion. And destroying religion. For the name God Jehovah. God says that's righteous. If you're not going to serve our military. And you're able to be in our military. You need to move your headquarters out of America then. I went in the military. I went to the U.S. Navy. San Diego. I came home because I, had, I, I didn't realize the migraine headaches. I didn't think I didn't think anything that same. I was discharged with a migraine headache. I feel everybody 18. Once you graduate from school, high school, I think every male should go in the military. If you get every male in the, in the military at age 18, you won't need a woman. I think it's defiled to send a woman into combat. Man, you hate me for that one too, but you send every male for four years after when they turn 18. Then maybe, you know, every male goes in the military 18 for four years. Then when they become politicians and Republicans and Democrats, maybe they'll stand more for the veterans because they're one. I don't know, the, the present president of the United States, I know Obama didn't serve in the military. I'm not sure about Donald Trump. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I can't say nothing. But I believe, whether Donald Trump or not, whoever, I believe every president of the United States should work his way through the military. The first president of the United States was commander-in-chief of the military and army, George Washington. I don't think we should vote for a pre Oh boy, I, there we go. I mean, people just turn. I think we should let the man crawl up in the ranks of the military properly 
And in order to crawl up the ranks of, of, the, of the government to the presidency, he has to fight a war. I think Bush the father was the last one that was in war. I, I, don't, I, could, I don't look at it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And if Donald Trump served in the, in the military, glad for him, good. I hope he got a lot out of it. I don't think Obama did. I think that's wrong. And if he did, I apologize. I, I'm wrong. Verse 32. They angered him. God. Israel angered God. That's not a liberal God there. Also, the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sake. Moses got angry. Threw, bam! Smoked that rock. God said, I told you to speak to it. Moses had an anger problem. If you look at. Because they, Israel, provoked his spirit, Moses, so that he spanked unadvisedly with his lips. Moses let them have it. And God said, I told you, speak, not hit that rock. And Moses was not allowed in the promised land. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. Joshua, Judges, 1 Samuel. But they mingled themselves among the heathen and learned their works. Joshua, Judges, Samuel. And they served their idols, which were a snare to them. Judges. I mean, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Jeremiah, King. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devil. Post-abortion. After the children have been born. And shed innocent blood, murder. Even the blood of their sons, of their daughters. Uh, wait a minute, I thought Phinehas killed somebody. Knows how Phinehas does not get innocent blood. But when they sacrifice their children to the God of, of self, they call it abortion, but they don't call it murder. You call them evil good and good evil. They are taking their children. They are killing their children. And God said, slain of innocent blood. That's murder. That is thou shalt not kill. Whom they sacrifice unto idols of Cana. That is the devil, verse 7, 37. And the land, land of Israel, was polluted with blood. And God said, the only way that blood can be cleansed is by the blood of the one that shed it. The murderer. And God said that to Noah. When Noah got out of that boat, anybody that slays anybody, including the animal. America has much blood speaking to God in vengeance. You don't think that's so? The book of Revelation says there are people in the tribulation period that are at the throne of God who have been beheaded for the word of God and their blood is crying out for vengeance. That's before the law, during the law, and after the law, and in the church age. And the tribulation period. You gotta study your Bible. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own invention. All kinds of things that go against God. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord, that's not a liberal God, kindled against his people, Israel. And if his wrath is kindled against the nation of Israel for their sinning and their wickedness, we are the children of God. And if we are going to do wickedness, the wrath will be upon the church too. If God does not spank the hiney of the Christians that do wrong, he will have to apologize to every Israelite that did wrong, that he punished and chastised. And God is not going to apologize. Because he need not. 
Is there anything that God cannot do? He cannot apologize for chasing his children for doing wrong. In so much that he abhorred, hated, hated his own inheritance, Israel. Look at that. Look at that. God hates the sin and loves the sinner. <laughs> Verse 40 says, uh -uh. God hates the sin and abhors the sinner. Well, we got to get a modern Bible and change that. I bet you it's probably there. I don't look it up, but it probably has been changed. I don't look at modern Bible. Oh, important stuff I look at modern Bible. I got more important things to do. And he, God, gave them into the hand of the heathen. Judges. Jeremiah. Israel went into Assyria. And they hated them, ruled over them. Out of Hitler, Babylon, the Antichrist soon. Their enemies also oppressed them. They came out of oppression in Exodus. They're going back in it because they didn't give God the glory. Well, what God's going to do to the church age before we're called out of here? They were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times did he deliver them judges, 12 judges. But they provoked him with their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. God gave them victory, they sinned. They prayed to God, God sent the deliverer. The deliverer died, they sinned. God brought them to captivity. They, they repented, God brought the deliverer. The deliverer gave them deliverance. They died. Then they sinned. God put them in captivity. And they repented. And God gave them a deliverer. And the deliverer got victory. And then the deliverer died. And then they went back into sin. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction and heard their cry. That's the book of Judges. He sent them a deliverer. And he remembered for them his covenant and repented according to the multitude of his mercy by giving them judges. He made them also to be pitied of all those that carried them captive. Dyrus. Dyrus said, pack it up. Go back and build to your God. Even Nebuchadnezzar had a little respect after God made him a human lawnmower. You don't know what I'm talking about? Get out of the television and get in your Bible and read. Save us. Oh Lord our God. Jehovah saves. That's Jesus. And gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name, Nehemiah, Ezra, and the second coming of Jesus Christ. And to triumph in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Lord God of who? Israel. And everlasting to everlasting, never ending. And let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Let every people say, say it in church. 